Okay, we're good. Okay. Um, yeah, so I've just been really focusing on um, getting situated um, with school and and I guess like for, you know, for like seekers like us, I think the main struggle is um, whether it's passion over money or it's money over passion, there's always this underlying struggle. I guess in the start, um, people go through that and then they kind of figure out, okay, um, where they can channel the energy more into. Yeah. You're yeah. Ha are you having struggles with money? No, not so much with money. I've never really had struggle with money because I've never focused on money. Like, I, I've always accepted money. Like, um, I do not have reservations about, like, taking it from my parents or this or that. I just accept it as it's just energy. And I feel like if someone wants to give it to you or you're being presented with it in any way, you just accept it mm -hmm. rather than to resist it. That's, that's when you start having like problems with money. But it's so much as like, you know, what am I gonna do for career? Like, you know, to have an independent, um, so-called free life. <laughs> so like, <laughs> cause like, I, like, you know, I, I guess it's, I just feel like I don't wanna live in the shackles of anybody or anything, even the society. So, um, so I had a little bit of struggle like figuring out because I wanted to get into psych and I was like, but I don't like how the modern psychology is now these days, um, how they can just come up with random theories and they just limit us into those paradigms. Are they, are um, they still uh, Freud and Jung centered as far as the basis for psychology or are they bringing other uh, philosophers in? Um, yeah, um, well, I mean, like, just for psychology, they draw in different psychologists. Mm -hmm. um, um, you know, like the prison experiment in America, I forgot the guy's name, but um, um, I'm like super blank. <laughs> Um, what was the prison experiment? Um, it's... Let me see. Hold on. I'm going to be tested on this in like four months and I can't remember. <laughs> uh, yeah, the Stanford prison experiment. You know, by this guy called... Um, uh, Philip Zimbardo. Zimbardo, I think, his name. I haven't heard of him. So, Oh, okay, so what happened was he wanted to basically understand the relationship between like prisoners and like prison officers like taking care of them and how these prisoners just conform to authority like subconsciously or con unconsciously. Mm -hmm. um, so he basically picks out random people uh, from across the board, like some college students, some middle-aged common men, and um, he gives he assigns them like random roles, like either as a police officer or as a prison as a prisoner. And as the day go as the days goes by, like he sees how they eventually become the roles that they are assigned to, and how they actually become brutal and um crazy enough to keep the roles going like they just completely be like they both completely become one and um his wife philip uh zimbardo uh, she came in to kind of terminate the experiment because it was it was becoming brutal and radical was this something that he did in isolation As an experiment. or was yes in isolation so he wasn't in with a prison, he just made a thing, like a, um, a pseudo-prison? I mean, it was like a simulated prison, 
Um, so he was always on at the other side of the wheel and he made sure that this just happened as a part of the routine. And then he was just observing every single day what these, um, you know, candidates were enacting. So, so you're saying they, they put, uh, staying in character, so to speak, as higher importance than, uh, it's, um, he figured out it's more like they conform to authority and then not just that they conform to authority, but, um, they made sure that they basically like conform to the rules and regulations as well as to what a prisoner or, uh, what an officer is being expected of. Um, yeah. And it, what's the weirdest part is that a lot of prisoners went through like real psychological torture and they would literally say, get me out of here, get me out of here. And when um, if Philip would be to just ask them to leave, they wouldn't want to leave. Like they didn't want to leave as if they had like a Stockholm syndrome yeah. effect at the same time. Hmm. So, I mean, yeah, these experiments and these psychological simulations are very interesting um i'm not saying that modern psychology is all farce it's just that i feel the way they come to, i mean the interpretations may be right the theories may be right but i feel like uh the things that they do to resolve or minimize it it doesn't have that spiritual touch mm -hmm. so i feel like there's a lot of um in between um, in the modern psychology. So that is why I, I was like, okay, never mind. Like, let me think about something else. I can always, I feel like we all have, um, like an inherent, like a psychologist in us, because I feel like we humans, we inherently understand each other, but we just don't listen to the advice that we have to them more so. Um, don't you think? Well, if you try to do that, then you are, you have to be going against the ones that are following instruction. Right. Because yeah. what's coming from inside of yourself is not something that you can write down in a book and say, like, this is me and this is exactly how I'm going to react in every situation. It's different in every right. situation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. It's just... Yeah, it's, it's just... Um, it's not just different theories. Um, you know, Gary, I've always felt the more so when we read something, we just like take that in 100%. So maybe there won't, or there may not be any theory at all, like maybe confirmed to authority. Maybe. I mean, maybe there is, maybe there isn't. But I feel like when people write it down or um, when it's highly publicized, I feel, I feel like subconsciously we just take it as, okay, that's true, that's right. That's what I feel about the education system. I feel like there's so much brainwashing to the point where um, I feel like there's no going back for, I mean, if you're not really aware. Well, the... One of the problems that I have noticed is that we do things very well, such as build cars and airplanes and infrastructure and roads, yeah, dams, water management, harp, you know, hadron collider, all of these, all the technology stuff we're really good at, mm -hmm. and that went very far. But as a society, we never seemed to learn how to separate the value system for uh, tools and practicality versus the inner being of the people and creativity and art and individual expression. We didn't seem to separate that very well. So it's like during the Industrial Revolution or something, uh, the people got so enamored by what the processes and systems could do that they took yeah. that one idea which is we can 
uh, we can take and manipulate physical matter and do things with it. They took that one thought form. We can manipulate <clears throat> physical matter. And they let that try to be the golden standard for all of life. Oh, yeah. And that's yeah. and that's being governed by the money system, which is another system. It's just a system monitoring a system. It's money energetics are monitoring how matter is transformed into tools, but that's neglecting the spiritual aspect of it for the most part. Yes. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Um, I mean, yeah. Um, I guess it's just... It's just a system that we really can't blame because um, these are just mere puppets. I guess there's like a bigger thing working, you know, behind it and basically maneuvering these beings to, or the system to perhaps um, behave in a certain way. And one of the interesting things that I noticed um, that I've been reading recently was about the 5G and the singularity. Um, so I feel like this is what I may like from my intuition and uh, my inner guidance. I feel like I've been guided into uh, into a technology to learn more about it, to educate more people about it. So, yeah, like for some reason, I just feel drawn to like data science. Um, and also, I read this article written by somebody but how they talk about 5G being like this um, this bigger and millimeter um, frequency wave that actually captures like your spiritual identity and then they store it in some kind of a cloud in a bigger database. So when you exit your body, when you go in between the, uh, when you go to the in-between area, mm -hmm aware waiting to reincarnate and you know stuff like that they basically just just use this identity that you have let it flail on the internet and then they kind of attach it to your soul mm -hmm. and then boom there you go they control your next life as well and and they tell and they were talking about how it's a trap and and how karma is eventually a trap because it doesn't let you to just exit uh, the matrix or the holographic universe once and for all. And um, and the reason why that intrigued me was all my life I've lived around like tech, you know, tech parents and just any friends or family, they're always like in technology. Yeah. So I feel like there is a reason why, like, no matter what else I wanted to do, I always come back to technology. I didn't really understand this, like, maybe three or four years ago. But I'm, I start to have, like, a clear picture of what I need to do, like, as my purpose for the humanity, perhaps. Mm -hmm. um, there's this upcoming revolution of, um, you know, data, data science. Um, that could also like interwine into the 5g and the cloud and the database capture um and also they you know in the essay they were talking about how you can't just let your information out on social media like that and how there are um, certain entities like um the ancestry.com mm -hmm. ancestry 23 or something like that where you know they take your blood samples and they trace your ancestry lines and how those um, markets are also working for um, the dark forces. Um, so there is a lot of crazy things that's going around here that I'm trying to wrap my head with. But more importantly, I'm more interested in AI than anything else that I'm focusing on. Mm -hmm. So like, I feel like this is what my, um, research in the future perhaps is going to be like um, it's going to be like probably an intervening of uh, data science and artificial intelligence um because the thing is i feel like artificial intelligence is just another expression of human humans we created it yeah so 
if we can understand how that system overlays um, human behavior, I feel that spiritually uh, we can find different interdisciplinary um, methods to override it. So that's what I have been focusing on throughout uh, yeah. the weeks. Yeah, it's it's always been difficult for me to, uh, like I'm interested, I'm curious about things, yeah. and I'm curious about AI, and I'm curious about data harvesting, and I'm curious about how this uh, identity thing is going to advance itself. Yes. Because... Yeah. If you look at our very tiny history that we have going on here, as far as like your own memory and mm -hmm. data keeping, uh, it's archaic in the sense that the straw man character is a very poor representation of even just your body mind complex. Even if you were only talking about that and you were talking about deeper spiritual aspects, like the nuances, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that entity that, uh, record keeping entity via your name and social security number is just a horrible record keeper it has very little relevance to and it only keeps records of it mainly keeps records of sort of uh knocks against you like bad things mm -hmm. um it doesn't really keep record of good things if, if you think back like what does this record keeping system do as far as like when someone does a, commits a crime, right? That goes right. into the straw man da database. This person mm -hmm. committed da da da, and that's like on the thing, and it stays there. But yeah. if you help somebody out, you know, help out a homeless guy, give a hug, cheer somebody up, right? Energetically, that's probably much more important than these negative things. But we don't have in the current system a way to record those. Uh, right. Good things. Yeah. So it's just a it's a very poor record keeping system of the the perceived negative actions of humans. And of course, humans are, especially nowadays, everybody is like a a five year old ADHD kid with a three second, <laughs> you know, they have a three second attention span. So they don't even remember what they did. Likely, as far as like actually remembering it, they go and look at the database and they're like, oh, you know, I have if you have a couple crimes written down and you know of the database, you're in your head, you're going to be like, that shit's never going to go away as long as I'm, I'm alive. And you're going to focus on that rather than yeah. focusing on what you actually are, which probably by now has very little to do with those instances. But as a society, as a negatively oriented society, we've put way <laughs> a huge amount of emphasis on record keeping for the negative stuff. Yes, uh, absolutely. I always um, felt that, I mean, yeah, all comes down to karma and how sometimes we humans, we just get swayed away by uh, these concepts. I mean, I was born into a Hindu family. I was basically preached karma every single day, <laughs> mm -hmm. more than any other family or any other culture. Um, but I just feel like more so, I feel I'm starting to feel it's more as a trap because there's always this like a negative emphasis on oh you do this and then you're gonna come back another life and you're gonna repent for your sins or you're gonna repeat your, your lessons until you learn it. But the funny thing is, I don't think there'll be any any lifetime that we are completely clean slate that we don't make mistakes because we live in. A human body we live in a 3d realm and well, then we expect it to like have clean slates who's who's yes. making the who's making the judgment call on karma um some indian culture myths i mean it's yeah. kind of ingrained in our brains but right but i'm saying like if you were to think of it yourself think of what karma say got me exactly into this current situation that i'm in and even if you went back a couple lifetimes and you saw, okay, well, you know, I was a derelict in this one and I was, you know, I killed somebody in that one, whatever, like the things that we mm -hmm. deem to be bad, like who's judging those things? Because even here in the awake state, we have, we do have a, a system that sort of works, which is called the court system. And even here we have murderers that get set free 
and we have innocent people go spend 50 years in jail and then at the end of it they find out that the guy didn't even do it right right that's that's in this current reality with the so-called facts in plain sight as far as you know as well as we can get it so who's right. who's sitting here determining um, the karmic effects that are situating you in your current situation i mean apparently because you know no one has a control over free will so they make us into believing i mean this is my understanding of it i guess they make us into believing that we're wrong and we're meant to come back um different lifetimes to kind of you know repeat those lessons um you know as these scriptures kind of preach it i guess we ourselves make those as um you know, history repeating itself. I guess we are the forerunners behind it, if we yeah. think about it. It's nobody else controlling karma. It's ourselves. Maybe right. our ingrained thinking more than anything else. Right, so if you, if you see that clearly enough while you're looking at yourself, mm-hmm. you have the ability to go and find out what you did You know, if you're, because it's you, it's you that's holding on to this judgment that says, you know, whenever you, whenever I die and I'm doing a life review, then I'm going to judge myself and I'm going to say, yeah, you fucked up, you know, get your ass back in there for (laughs) for another go, right? But theoretically, if you wanted to ever get off the wheel, you know, you have to, you have to have some way to prepare yourself when you're in that situation, you know, you've heard all the things like don't go to the light or play dead or what anything like anything that you can do when when you're in this situation uh, that is not energetically giving yourself permission to kick yourself back onto the wheel. Right. So I have a question. So even for I mean, if even uh, is there really um and control system that's outside of the matrix um because a lot of people um a lot of sometimes unaware and sometimes people working for different entities which they're very well aware of but they choose it just to choose to go with it anyway Mm -hmm. um is there a control system behind beyond the matrix which means organically um to control everything or we're just on our own deciding what's good for us and what's bad for us and no i i I, I think for sure there's there is a a control system i wouldn't say it's so much necessarily a system because you can't you can't ever uh every time you go in with one sentence you're chopping the existence into parts and already you're you're getting beyond what it actually is but (laughs) <laughs> if, if this situation that we're in now was not very well regulated, and we're always talking about sheeple and people being asleep and this and that, right? Like NPCs and so on, like nobody's awake and everybody's, uh, you know, fully matrix bound. If, right. if, if there was not a control structure outside of this realm, then the people would not all be asleep. Huh. It's not in. It is inside the realm. It's inside and it's outside. It's whatever it is. But the, whatever the control structure, even if you say it's just local, mm-hmm. it's extremely powerful because if you look outside, you see everyone's doing the same exact thing every single day. Right. Yeah. But as far as outside of the realm, it, that's that's a subjective uh, question. Unless you have any memories whatsoever of what outside the realm means. Right. Yeah. I guess it just have to, we just have to remember um, ourselves. Like, it's the remembering that we're ultimately building, um, as in we are the creators from within and without, but it's more like coming back to that remembrance, right? I, I, I think it's kind of like... And, I mean, I can relate it to a bunch of different things, but just a simple, a, a very simple uh, uh, simile, I guess, whatever the word is, uh, your your own body, right, 
like you're if you consider what is the control structure that's regulating how the body moves you what you consider to be yourself you're not the <laughs> you're not the one that's sitting in there doing mechanics on your body you're not like pulling you're not like say for instance if you're driving your car you're not the piston that's going up and down you're not the cable that the gas pedal is connected to that connects to the carburetor or whatever probably there's no more right. carburetors but you're not in those mechanics whatsoever but yet you still feel a very intimate connection with your body right you can move it and it works properly yeah right yeah, absolutely and and also the body is your body is listening to you whatever you is we still probably nobody knows what is this i the actual like self that's what everybody's been trying to figure out forever but whatever that sense of i that you have if you if you've done your self work then your body's listening to that and it's not listening to all of these tv advertisements uh, religious fear programming fear porn uh the joneses what mom and dad what parentals are telling you uh everybody and their mother is trying to tell you what to do but if you have gotten your own inner resolve then your body's listening to you and if, if you're not saying anything to it your body's not moving right yeah and you absolutely ha and you have no clue how that works right yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah i mean um you know i had uh my grandfather's brother um you know, he used to always talk about how the body is very important and, um, y you know, and um, I don't know if you have researched about this guy called Valilar um, in the 1800s. So he didn't preach or he didn't like, you know, proclaim himself as any guru or anything like that. But eventually he became, with his own body, he became a flame and it said that he, you know, he reached enlightenment, like he used his own body. Mm -hmm. So when I, when they went into his room, they eventually just found the flame. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it makes total perfect sense and how we have to build like an intimate connection with our body more than anything. Um, and obviously, it ha has to be like like callings with your, your spirit and your soul, all and your mind, all have to come together, your body, your, your spirit, your soul, you know, um, to create this so to create to create um a frequency or reality that can truly transcend and and i guess that's when you can eventually leave the some the some star yeah um i i just i really feel like the reason we've been doing this for a long time is because everybody's been entrained for a really long time and when i say entrained i mean like they don't know they exist kind of entrainment as they're so they're so stuck into this narrative storyline history thing that they're always in projection and they're never in their own body in their own present moment and therefore it looks like robots out there and if anything the reason why it's repeating is because people haven't even yet explored this thing whatever this is at all so like you're yeah. we're, we're being given time essentially to actually take a look into this reality and find out what's going on and what is our part in it are we literally just chickens in a coop and there's some unseen dark hand that's siphoning energy and we can do nothing about it or are we something else or is it nothing to do, to do with either of those two situations you know there's there's endless possibilities right absolutely right because if because if we haven't figured out what this is at least a tiny bit we probably don't deserve to go to any next level yet yeah that's very true <laughs> <laughs> not yeah. to mention you know you know whatever it's like jumping courses you know <laughs> yeah and if you you know yeah. what whatever we see to be as sort of uh, horrifying here or you know there are energy attacks energy's weird all the time you know you can listen to the the astrologers and they'll tell you, you know like waves are coming i'm sure you've felt you know energy waves come through that don't even seem connected to some situation yes. that's happening right um even recently i don't know if you've noticed like an energy shift 
weirdly i feel anxiety i feel it's not really from me maybe it's from the collective consciousness or from you know from just interacting with other human beings not to say that i don't have anxiety um but i feel like i'm just kind of i i can feel it i don't know if you have been feeling it and yeah. then i realized that it's not really coming like it's not coming from me you know it's just projections basically um you know and then these projections actually trigger different projections within us but we can choose to not react or react depending on what level of growth or learning we are in um so it has been quite intense for the last two weeks mm-hmm. yeah i i feel it here and there yep. and i've i've not really had like sleepless nights but recently i've been dealing with it after a long time yeah because um back in uh i mean two years ago um it was just the same girl <laughs> that was prescribed like antidepressants and you know i was prescribed like these different medication um uh, one day i woke my i mean i woke up and i was like i'm going to throw this away and i'm going to figure this out on my own because i felt like i was becoming more psychotic with those medications mm-hmm. uh with anxiety pills and everything and i took the spiritual route out and that's when i started to get to know about more things and everything So yeah it's it it feels funny because I've not had it in a long time and to actually feel it it's, it just doesn't feel like it's it's a part of me anymore <laughs> as weird as it sounds yeah yeah well you learn how to have that separation because right. when energy at least when it's coming through for me uh I don't I don't do the narrative thing for my life hardly at all anyway So right. the likelihood that I'm going to have some energy coming through my body and say, well, this is because, you know, the dog yelled, the dog barked at me, so I'm mad, or, you know, such and so person did this, that stuff doesn't even affect me. So mm-hmm. I feel the energy coming through, and maybe it's the collective angst, or maybe it's, you know, some beings playing with suns or whatever they're doing out there, but I do feel it, and it it's very distinct, it's not... I'm not projecting it. It's very, I'm very much aware of it. I'm in the moment and this energy is passing through and it and I I have to deal with it, you know. But what I'm saying, what I'm saying with the the people that keep harping on wanting to get out, they don't know uh you're here people are you're here for like your protection as well, not just because uh you're some school some school kid you know like galactic being that's in kindergarten or whatever you know who maybe this is the master class who knows you don't know what level you're in but yes there's pr- yeah. there's protection that is specifically for you in the state that you're in and if all of a sudden you punch out through the the membrane to some other thing you might just dissolve in a split second or some the frequency is too much for you your 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 head will explode or something like there's there's the balance is there There's balance right. here and if you try and do something too fast right just like if you're a deep sea diver and you try and come up too fast right right one second here right i think someone keeps uh ringing my bell just give me one second yeah dog ring um, the doorbell no i just um that was this delivery man he just handed something over to me okay yeah and yeah my dog will <laughs> <laughs> i don't know he just likes attention he always likes sparks <laughs> at people all the time that's what dogs tend to do yeah um, um but yeah oh I, w- i was wanting to say something else also about you're asking about the control structure uh, what what could possibly be outside yeah like you know influence i don't know people say it's your good family uh, some people say it's your galactic life federation i don't know what these beings really like i mean what those realms do eventually like i've always been fascinated by it but i don't have any information 
I think I can, I think I can uh, tell, you know, I think I can relate it to chess a little bit because I understand a lot of this realm through chess. Okay. In, in in the the computers, the sort of AI that has come into chess. Uh, uh -huh. So, generally speaking, AI is much better than every single human n now. The AI in the 1990s, Deep Blue, beat the world's best grandmaster. This was in the 90s. Now, computing techno technology is much, 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 much past what it was then. And the computers just destroy grandmasters with ease there's no problem whatsoever you, you could give them take pieces off the board and the computer will still beat them so oh, yes so what i'm what i'm saying is that when you're talking about this sort of a struggle this this striving for something right like in your own yeah. life in your personal life you have goals you have ideals you have dreams and visions that you would like to enact upon the world right mm-hmm so if you if you just pretend for a moment you're playing a game of chess because people have said this many times I've thought about it like in in your own life you're making decisions right every single choice that you make just pretend like you moved a pawn mm -hmm. you, yes. you wake up and you're like I'm gonna brush my teeth okay you moved a pawn somewhere I'm gonna go to this school maybe you move a rook right <laughs> so If you imagine that the, the AI tech in chess has gotten to the point where humans can't even compete anymore, right? Right. Now, AI being that good in chess has not stopped humans from playing chess. They still huh. play, right? Right. And they're not better than the AI, but they still play. So what I'm saying is that there is a sense in the larger control structure that's outside of this realm, as far as I understand, that every single move you can make here in the realm, and I mean every single move, every thought form, oh, I'm going to go, you know, I'm going to go bake, bake a potato, right? That has already been done infinite different ways in the larger sort of cloud of knowledge of all of the different multiverses, right? So, like, right. the outcomes are already known about, all of the outcomes are already known about, but being that we are playing the game of chess not with that ultimate knowledge, we're playing sort of in ignorance, and we like playing the game, right? We don't want to know every single possibility, because then it's, it's no more fun. So, in the same way that chess is not forcing the humans that are not as good at chess to somehow mm. compete against AI... In the same sense, here in the realm, if we're making chess moves, you know, and say the the larger knowledge that says, look, if you bake that potato at that heat and at this particular time in your life with all these surrounding circumstances, it's going to lead you down such and so path. And this is exactly where you're going to be in 10 years. Like, the, if, you knew, if you had that knowledge, you probably wouldn't have fun anymore. You'd be like, all right, I don't want to bake the potato. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do something else, right? You, you keep doing something else because you don't want... There's no more fun in it if you know exactly how it's going to go down. Right. So, yeah. So, so what I'm saying is that there probably is a sense in the, the larger control construct that it knows all of your possible choices, including the bad ones, including if you kill somebody, including if you rape somebody, including if you become a dictator, and it knows it can extrapolate that out down however many years, millions, billions, eons, I don't know how far this sort of higher knowledge goes or not, but I know it's much further than whatever we hold at this level of understanding. Right. But um, do you think at any point that this construct can dissolve? Um, because I feel that maybe we don't have to play the chess game sometimes. Yeah, it can dissolve, for sure. But it's, okay. it's, it's dissolving for you. It's not dissolving... When, when we sit there and we think, when is this, when is the wheel going to be done? And when am I going to be mm -hmm. done? We, th we imagine apocalypses. We imagine like the world lighting on fire and then just burning to nothing. Or we imagine, you know, somebody pressing the button for the ultimate atom bomb and everything exploding. But it's not like that. It's, it's per individual. Like, mm. 
I yeah. was listening to Sat Sat Guru the other day, and he was saying like <laughs> you 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 you're dead for a third of your life. Like you go to sleep and you disappear. You know, maybe you're having dreams, maybe not, but the the I that is here and present during the waking state is not anywhere to be found in that state. Yeah. If anything, it's sort yes. of unconscious dream state, right? Right. So where yeah, is the world? I, where is the world while you're sleeping? Like, is it really bothering? Right. Yeah. Like, it's like a hypnosis. It's just like, whatever, you know, just like, <laughs> not Think, yeah. here, but things here. Are, things are sort of happening, but you don't have the, the same, it's the, the same thing is not happening. The same exact thing is <laughs> not happening. Yeah. No, I completely agree. So like, it's just that. It's weird how I don't even have memory of my childhood. I don't know if you have distinct memory of your childhood. I really don't. Um, I don't know if that's, there was some abduction that happened. I don't know. I, I don't even, I can't. I have a feeling that may have been, but it's like all I remember until I was like 21, it's just that I was not here at all. Like, I don't know who I was. Yeah, I well, mean, we had an identity crisis, and <laughs> it can it can be anything. It can be anything. Like when I when I started practicing being present and mm -hmm. staying in my moment, the the importance of the past diminished more and more and more and more until at some point it was not important, aside from whatever my own whimsy sort of like wanted to be important. There, there wasn't yeah. some, there wasn't some thing saying like, you need to remember this, you need to remember that, this is important for such and so. All of that went with me stop, stop uh, narrativing or making the story every single day. And, mm -hmm. it, and it became irrelevant. The past right. is not, it's not even necessary for because we in how we and how we're made up you could say it's god's gift or something i don't know whatever however it is that we are made up holding on to the past is not necessary for your functioning to be able to continue right and also you don't forget about like people you love about but when the situation is appropriate for you to remember someone you care about then you remember them but you're not sitting there thinking about them all the time when you're not like physically present with them Right. Yeah, I, I agree. And then so um, you don't have this, because when you're doing that, that's sort of the old way of thinking where you're doing the storyline in your head all the time and you're making a bunch of multiverses inside of your head that that is not directly relating to some experience that actually happened. And then when you go and talk to the person that's been floating around in your head and you've been having conversations with that, you go talk with that person, you're going to be telling them as if they were with you in these parallel universes you've been creating in, in your mind and they weren't there they're gonna be like what are you talking about i wasn't mm -hmm. i wasn't doing that I, I didn't have any of those thoughts you know it's this double vision thing that we have going on that it, it reduces the import of your own moment oh yes yeah i think especially women these days <laughs> we do that a lot i think i mean including me i used to do that a lot I mean, I guess we just take this one incident and we blow it out of mm -hmm. this big proportion. Yep. And also when I see relationship these days, like my friends, my family, whoever around me, you're just basically projecting all of each other, mm -hmm. if, you know, unless you're aware. Like, you know, when I have a conversation with you, I have no anxiety, I have no reservations, I have nothing whatsoever because it comes from a place of of knowing i think just knowing ourselves and you're just knowing you know i guess there's also when you really know yourself there's an inherent t trust that just mm -hmm. builds it's like it's been like an invisible um you know trust um which lacks for the most part um yeah like so how do you deal with that like how do you just how do you deal with the common men and just come back to, okay, this is me. Um, Cause I, I always feel like I'm always jumping around. I, I basically go to people where I see that they're at. Okay. And 
this doesn't mean that I run out and try to make interactions happen because I'm not this social character, even like the amount of things I've generated on YouTube. It, that's not my natural state is to be putting myself out there and having a bunch of people watching. Um, right. But the circumstances of how my life has unfolded has put me in front of a bunch of people because like I'm doing rideshare and then I'm doing yeah. YouTube and uh -huh. I'm interacting with a bunch of people on a daily basis. So what, what I found is it's one of two things. It's either one, you're in the ego mind and you have the uh -huh. narrative and the narrative that you have needs to be affirmed by whoever you're around. And this is, does not mean that you're saying, look, this is the way the world is and I want you to confirm with me that this is how it is. It's a subconscious asking and if the person does not do that to your liking, your internal sub, like subjective desires for their energetic output to match your internal worldview, uh -huh. then you feel upset about that. Yes. And so it, it creates this agitation between the two people and they don't even necessarily know why that's happening they just know there's some sort of unease right so when you're not doing that like when like when the way i am around people i don't have i don't have an internal world that needs verification by every single person that i meet so so uh -huh. they don't feel coming from me any sort of need one way or the other because i don't care Right. It's just like you just let them play their story and you're like, yeah, okay, yeah, okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay, that makes sense. Um, yeah, I mean, yeah, I think it just all comes down to just having no control issues, <laughs> then just let go. Well, we um, do have control, though. We, I mean, it's just... You, everybody gets tripped up in the semantics and they get tripped up on words and what they mean and and uh, the words are they're fun we like words because we paint the universe with them essentially our internal universe is painted with words for the most part but that again is the first that's like infant stages in a sort of a being sitting here and like creating universe with words is like trying to build a house with just blocks and nothing else just like like kids blocks like here's I'm building the house like that's what you're doing with words you're using kid blocks and then you're like how come the the house blew over when a small breeze came through you know like that's the level of complexity that you're you're, you're using when you're stuck on just the words is that basic level it's that super basic that's why they say the the English language is like a slave language in terms of yeah in terms of the actuality of what beings are the, right. the con the conceptual language that we use is like level one it's like apes grunting at each other it yeah i i've always found recently i mean i've always found something wrong with the language like and i have always had problems expressing myself um i thought there was something wrong with me when i wasn't aware but now i i just feel like i can't find the words to match up my exact frequency and i always say something short of what is Mm -hmm. you know in actuality i always find english language to be very primitive because you know in my mother tongue uh, it's a lot different um you know tamil it's a very old language but i feel like maybe because english is just a mishmash of different languages coming together and it's like primitively like you know put yeah um and also there's a lot of spells uh within and without that's why i always wanted to research like you, you know if so for me since i was born into a different language how is it as different to english um it's a lot of work but okay maybe one day i can wrap my head around it well the 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 main thing i noticed when i was diving into what words meant what concepts meant mm -hmm. the main thing i noticed was that it means lots of things there's not one meaning and yes. you come in with when you're entrained you think it means something like you think a sentence 
this means something and that's what it means and that's what it means and that's what it means. And you think there's one meaning. And then you just have to look at one word that has four different meanings. It sounds the same, has four different meanings. Right? Right. Yeah. And then understand that the flow of the conversation dictates whether it means one thing or two things or ten things or how it's intricate. It's not just this one thing. And not only that, it's not supposed to be just one thing. It's supposed to be more like flow and song and dance. Like that's what the language is supposed to be. It's not supposed to be this, <laughs> this like manual, you know, it just means exactly that and turn the, the screw, you know, 25 degrees counterclockwise and loosen it to the torque. We, we were doing it like machine language. That's, that's how we were doing. We were doing it like, as if we were cogs in a machine. And that's why it looks like that, because everyone is like, yeah, this means exactly the... It doesn't mean anything. Like, the language doesn't mean anything. It's, it's how you flow with it. It's how, it's how the person you're talking to is taking it. It's body language. It's emotions. It's what your self is as a spirit very deep down. All of that comes together in the right. language, and it does something. But it's not anything near to what sort of you're given in schools or something like it's just That's just programming. It doesn't mean, it doesn't mean anything. Yeah. On the higher levels, it doesn't mean anything. Like, I'm not sitting here saying I'm telling you something. I'm not. <laughs> but there's some, you can tell that something different is happening and something probably more respectful to you as a being is happening. And you can get in there and play with it rather than feel like, you know, something is just trying to bang you over the head with one hand and then give you an aspirin with the other hand. Like, that's a very old, like, <laughs> you know, it's a, it's a, backward, it's a yeah. backward way of living and it doesn't respect any of the people. Right. I mean, yeah. I mean, I, you know, I've been like told to tell you this, but it's like, I feel like your greatest gift is um, the way you speak, maybe perhaps the way you write. Yeah. Um, I always found that you, especially um, out of a lot of people that I've encountered, you have a way with the language, like you know how to, um, I don't know, like intricately you know, mood around, it's, it's, it's nice. Yeah. It's nice to see how people can just celebrate their gifts rather than to just not be aware of it at all. Yeah. I mean, I don't, I, if, if I did anything different, it's that I stopped trying to do something with how I'm speaking or how I'm, I mean, I listened to all the, the masters and I listened to all the gurus and that, you know, I went through all of everything and they would say stuff like, when I speak, I don't, I don't know what I'm going to say before I say it. And yeah, that, that's the most surprising part. <laughs> yeah. And on the basic level, it goes counterintuitive to, to everything we've been taught, because we were taught, you must prepare, got to prepare, got to prepare. Yeah. But yes. There's no, pre there's no preparation for the moment. It's too tiny. It's too fast. How are you going to prepare for that? Not to mention that it's, it's every second of every moment. You can't get right. you can't get to that if you try to get to it. Like right. trying trying to you're in a, you're in your moment, you know, try and get in there very deep to the core, like right at this very second. Like go see go in there see what you find in there. Can you can you do anything with it? Uh -huh. No. No. Absolutely not. And it's not that's not horrifying once you kind of have seen it closer, but everyone that is in the herd, you know, that thinks this this narrative is real mm -hmm. their 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 most horrifying thing is their own selves like their present moment that's what the society runs you away from it pushes you out into the future it pushes you back into the past it tells you history repeats itself it says you you know it it, it basically says your own gift which is your present moment is something bad and horrifying and so everybody stays away from it they're scared to look at themselves oh yeah because when you're locked in the present room and it's just you with yourself in that in that space and I, I, I guess that um, and also I yeah like like you told me in the past like it's like a meditative state so maybe the you know it's like you're coming like you know in in face to your your complete I don't know your realm or whatever your own realm <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> and uh that yeah that that really scares people away. Yeah. Yeah.
and it just it just scares people because they they think that the like the picture is the real thing it's as simple as that you you think your narrative in your head is the real life and it's just not like it's not like oh you're a bad kid because you know you thought that story you had in your head was your actual life and it actually isn't it's not that's not what the universe is going to do but it's going to push you and push you until at some point you're like oh i see like nothing of the story was me not nothing 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 never was never will be and that's just the way it is and it's not it's right. not scary once you're past that part but before that it feels like it feels like you are dying that's what ego death is right yeah yeah you know i've always also been like very hijacked by this word called ambition have aspirations mm-hmm. Um, I find it very silly because, I mean, just uh, to my understanding, you know, whenever I plan something, like, oh, this is what I'm going to do, like, the universe always have to wait to slap my face and say, no, you're not going to do this. <laughs> I'll put you in this now. Like, go. Right. <laughs> and get this done. Right. So, but also because we live in this treaty, um, you know, system, so... You know, if you're in college or if you're going to work, you you have to prepare. So I always found it like a double speak, like where, like how do I place myself? Because I do have tangible goals that I need to achieve, not like not for myself, maybe just perhaps for my survival. Mm-hmm. Obviously, if you just say that I oh, I don't care, even if I'm homeless, yeah, that's another thing. <laughs> But I guess it it takes a lot more courage to say that and leave than, you know. To, well, to... we we say those things, but we don't actually mean it. You know, that's like, yeah, I'm I'm gonna be homeless, but <laughs> you'll be surprised. You know, when when the thing comes in the mail and says like, get your ass out of the apartment. You know, you're not gonna just be running with open arms into homelessness because like we bluff ourselves a lot. We're like, yeah, I can do this, I can do that, and no, you can't do that. <laughs> like, <you're... laughs> yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I always found it like difficult. Like for example, yesterday I was in, um, I was in my political science class, and you know how my lecturer was like yippy yapping about, um, you know, the hegemons and how the world is being controlled, and without a structure, <laughs> um, the world will basically. You know, collapse without the power dynamics or the, the balance of power, mm-hmm. and I'm just like, I don't even know how to react. Right now. <laughs> Whether I should just like play into this narrative and just pretend like it's all true, <laughs> and then come back like this is just complete bullshit that you guys have just made it out of yourselves. And <laughs> yeah, humanity. you should tell them that next time. <laughs> it's a her <horror. laughs> <laughs> She always found a way to like bully me though. Or I, you know, because I'm always like very open and expressive about things that I feel um I guess she sees right through me yeah um yeah I always get bashed by lecturers um because I'm more like the rebel but like I'm like the silent rebel I don't really like defiantly like oh I I don't do that yeah I feel like it's not in me but I would like just will present and I don't like I started not to care like even if I get like um get teased or like just get laughed about i'm like okay whatever yeah it doesn't matter it it doesn't matter it's just just in like a split second i thought why don't they just forget whatever i know and just just go along with it like there was i have had those moments like in the past that that feeling right there is that's that's the actual life the it's the it's like when you find again that you're alive and we forget all the time that we're alive. We forget that we exist in the first place. It's, mm-hmm. And then the system encourages that. So, but when, you, when you're present, there, every single right. possibility within yourself is open to you. Right. Every single one. Like, for instance... We're doing a show together. I ha- I can stop the show. I can take the laptop and throw it through the window, like break the glass. I could do a bunch of squats, do a bunch of push-ups, go run outside, talk to every single neighbor in the town. I could sit and meditate. I can do anything. 
that I can possibly think of, but we forget. We forget about that. Right, yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, there's always, like, a struggle, like, where do you place yourself and, you know. Um, but I guess, like you said, it's just that we always have to remind ourselves, like, this is the actuality, like, this is what I'm, I believe in or what we are, you know, living or enacting. That makes a lot of sense. People, we get scared to live from that freedom. The freedom doesn't impose anything on you. Anything, anything, right. anything. There, it imposes sort of like the innate sense of I don't want to hurt people. Like that's very natural to human beings if, if they're not badly, badly injured or traumatized. So like yes. when, when you're in your moment and you're creatively allowing something to unfold or have an, have an idea and then manifest something out with that idea, you're totally in freedom. There's not outside of your own constrictions and your perceived like external constrictions like the government or whoever, there isn't outside of that. There's nothing. Right. And people get scared because it's too much responsibility. If they're so used to being guided around, you know, with the carrot, their entire lives then they're like i can do anything you're saying you're telling me i can do anything at all i'm not in prison i thought i was in a thousand different prisons that were inside another prison that were inside another prison that were inside at the very bottom of the lake you know underneath all these things i thought that's where i was and you're telling me like no you can do anything you can possibly imagine yeah yeah so like all these mental constructs just kind of exist in your head mm -hmm. um for the most part like, I always have to, I always feel like I have to slap myself to reality, like, guys, these things are not relevant or important. Why are you giving it so much importance to something that is, you know, just, just be yourself, live your life, and actually live? Because I guess we, a lot of the times, when you don't get locked into the present moment, we're not living. We're mm -hmm. just, like, machines, robots, just, like... You know, mechanically, like doing tasks every single you're, day. You're following your own programming. When you're not being present, you're yeah. following your own programming. So, a, a technique to find out if you're doing this is before you take action on something, ask yourself, who who came to me and said, Gayathri, you must do this? Yes. And then ask yourself, yeah. even right now, in the past two years, how many times has a being come up to you and said, Gayathri, do this? Many times. <laughs> they have done that many times? Many times. And who were they? Um, like parents? Parents. Yeah, you know, my teachers. I um I mean Or was it more was it more internal where sort of the trend yeah, made internal. you feel made you feel like you needed to do that? Yes. I feel like it's just internally like you know, we all have a switch, I guess. You know, I think my switch was just, like, off. Like, I wasn't operating from the place that I need to operate. And I, you know, when you just become, like, a, like a, like a slob and you're just <laughs> being moved around, uh, that's how I always felt, primarily. And then, like, you just, you know, and now it's, like, yeah, it's, it's funny how I've learned how to just, come back into my body and say not listening to any of this like for example yesterday when I went through that um, you know that emotional shift mm -hmm. I was like this doesn't exist it just exists in your head and it's projections and they're just attacking you and I just calmly told that to myself and I actually had a great sleep <laughs> which normally wouldn't happen so I mean yeah we just we just have to you know I guess it's also about like honoring yourself and loving yourself um, more than anything and and this control issue uh, you know that's something that I'm still working on like having like control issues <laughs> having to have certain things go like the way you know I wanted to go like exactly precisely you know that that thing that you that we do that you do the it, it's the idealism that mm -hmm. that's the main thing that stops people from taking any, any action whatsoever. Right. Like, like for instance, uh, if you're if you're a creator and you create music, you create art, um, or like me, like I create YouTube content. That's my it's creation, right? 
Yeah. If 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 I got in there at all and I said like I need to do I need to make videos like this, it needs to be the content needs to be like that. I need to treat the guests exactly like so. I would never do it. I just wouldn't do it. Oh yeah, yeah. I, I don't I don't even think about it. I don't think about what it's gonna be like. I just I have the knowledge that someone's gonna come on the show, and then I make sure I'm there at that <laughs> at that time. And then, however it happens, is how it happens. I don't know how it's gonna happen. Right. Yeah. I I absolutely agree. Like I feel like whenever we plan, and also my plans never go to plan. Like I always tell my friends, like don't get mad at me, you know, if I can't make it when we plan something, because I feel like planning never goes to reality for me. Like for the most part, like always when I do certain things spontaneously and like you know. Like you know, it's like an impromptu kind of setting that works the best for me. I mean, for the most part. Yeah. Um, you, you need like some, you need some day. you need some like I do I do the time thing. So like if I'm having a, an interaction with a person, I make sure that the timing is correct for the beginning. And right. then once yeah. I'm interacting with, say like we say you and I were in the same space, right? We're like let's get together at this time, right? Mm -hmm. I would get there at that time and then I would let it go and then if we wanted to do this or that or the other thing then that would happen in the moment and then you can bring the spontaneity in at that point right, but yeah, it's, it doesn't mean true. that you're throwing out of the window all of plans because you need some <laughs> structures otherwise nobody would ever meet each other they'd be like floating around they'd never bounce into each other <laughs> right I mean it's crazy how when it's something to do with like spirituality or like someone who's on the same frequency as I am, things just flows, like I have no idea how. But with the rest of my other friends, I don't know, there's, there's always been like not up to plan for the most part. And um, I've had misunderstandings in the past. I've, I always wondered why. Is it because they're not on the same frequency or is it because it's not meant to be? Uh, you know, it's just, I used to ask these questions a lot. Uh, <laughs> myself <laughs> it, yeah i don't know it's up to debate it's people people are different i mean if if you're inside of a narrative and you have a worldview then you're gonna clash with people and i mean yeah. you can you can get with people like say for instance you've stuck yourself in the democrat bucket right now now instead of 320 million people to in, possibly interact with in the states you have you know 160 million possibilities just because you said now I'm a Democrat right so now you're gonna clash with the Republicans and you're gonna get along with the Democrats and that's right. just that's one box that's one mind box just one so like oh yeah that's true so if someone is open and they're and like myself I don't I used to I used to be what I consider f like fence sitting like didn't take any stance on any issue whatsoever and then I got, I didn't, I started not liking that because it felt like, because I was becoming like a doormat as well for other people's opinions and whatnot. So then I took a different stance from that, which was, I'm going to look into all of the ridiculous stances that people take and I'm going to understand them. And then if someone wants to get into an argument with me, I'm going to beat you over the head with your own stupid ideas. Like just because, because they're, they're, they're all equally valuable. Like, yeah. They're equally valuable and they're equally silly. Like the Democrat notions versus the Republican. There, there's not, there's not an actual higher or lower value. But you can get in there as a sort of neutral bystander, and if someone wants to have a debate, I can have a debate because I understand the dynamics of it. But I don't care. Like, I, I debate with you and your own like weaknesses because you're glommed on to some particular thought form. So I see that you're glommed on to that thought form and then I'll use that if you want to debate, like if you want to have an argument, but I still, maybe you could consider that I'm fence sitting. If, if being balanced internally is fence sitting, then fine. But right. It's, it's just a different way of being able to flow with the information. And you know, I still, I have morals. I don't like people hurting each other and I don't like, technology willy-nilly trying to control the world and I don't like money god trying to control the world but at the same time I know that for every single force there's a there's a countering you know opposite yeah. force yes without yeah. me doing anything about it I'm not setting these forces up to 
cla- I'm not setting up yin yang to go and battle eternally. I'm not setting up like light to battle dark forever. But I see that right. that's just part of the duality system. Yeah, like um, I guess you know, in the duality system, the problems and the solutions are given to us at the same time. <laughs> but we only like look at the problems when we neglect the solutions. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's kind of funny. Yeah, how we're all like you know set up in this reality. Yeah. Um, so, like, like you know, how was your like, your, uh, you know, how was it for you when you were like, maybe perhaps my age when you were like twenty four? Mm. Like, how different were you? <laughs> um, I never, I never really, I never really bought the, the thought forms of the society. Um, I was always more of a wallflower, even when I was in school. I, I didn't really understand how the people were interacting. It seemed silly to me then, just like it, it does to me now, but then I still had image things, and I had like, you need to be this, and you need to be that, and you need to be such and so achievement, and the difference between then and now is now I don't have that. Now I know I can be this or that, or be none of it, or be all of it, and uh, to my own particular taste in the moment, that doesn't matter. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, like, um, you know, like, we always, like, trying to f- figure out how to rebel against the society. <laughs> Are really like, more like an introvert? Every single, every single situation is unique. Like, if you go into a gas station and you see people interacting and there's it's microcosms like whole universes are happening in conversation they're they're telling you what their universe is via their conversation and it's interesting you know like yeah oh yes it's just explore it's exploring like if you can drop your thing like this this worry that whatever it is that you're worried about if you can somehow drop it and just look and see how people are interacting and see that you yourself however you are you you have a place to go interact if you want to. And there's not yes. there's not an outside force being like, you must interact in this way or that way. Yes. <laughs> I mean, we've been told that. And we've been told, you know, like God's up there with, with his, you know, his checklist. And he's got a, a he's got <laughs> pro versus cons for guy three. Like, she did this good thing. She did that. And, she you know, she's in school. So that's pretty good. But, you know, she's also rebellious. <laughs> and she doesn't listen to her parents that often. And, you know, so we're balancing the sheet and whatnot. Like, Yes, that that can exist in your mind because you've been conditioned for that. But if you can drop the conditioning, it actually doesn't exist. Right. Yeah. I mean, that's a favorite line my parents used to pick on me. God is watching how you're treating your parents, and I'm like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Um, I mean, I mean, especially the Indian society. I mean, in all due respect, I feel like there's so much conditioning. And there's so much misogyny about how men control women. It's it happens so subconsciously, you know. Mm-hmm. You know, in the Indian culture, um, women are not meant to speak against men. Like, where does this all come from? Like, seriously, mm-hmm. <laughs> and like how like you know we're meant to serve them. Yeah, it's really sad. It's really sad. All the roles, yeah. all the roles are there. Yeah. But I mean, the 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 sort of setup does pro- it provides for tension and like again in chess, tension is the whole point of the game. If there wasn't tension, nothing would be happening. So we can complain sometimes and say, well, you know, system, money system, you know, religion system. You're putting too much tension on me. It hurts. Like it hurts for me to exist, and that's too is too much. So like you t- tone it down a little bit, please. You can do things like that, but, and it, actually the universe does listen to you. So like, if I'm really upset and I have like a rage session in my car and I'm like screaming, yelling, you know, shaking my fist at God or whatever, then I get something out of it. And I, like the universe or God, the higher self, whatever does respond and I get relief, but you have to, you have to communicate with that. It's not just going to sit there and just, if you consider that you're a very complicated being and you have nuance and things and half the time you don't even know what you want you think you know what you want but you're telling universe like 
I need this, I want this, universe is like, okay, she doesn't know what she needs, she has no clue what she wants, I kind of know what she needs, but I can't tell her that's what she needs. So there's this dynamic and this play that interplay is happening between that which actually knows every facet of you and then your inner self which is kind of it's a uh, you know it's in distortion like we're in distortion yeah. here we're we're outside of that sort of all-knowing state and we think we want something we think we don't want something we don't really know yeah but yeah somehow that comes together with some sort of balance and it gives you what you need right you always get what you yeah, need like like even though like i know like okay maybe this perhaps are along the lines of what i need to do and what i will do i always know like you know something else can come in and say hey no um, mm -hmm. this is what you're thinking <laughs> um i always know that uh, you know my plans may not really go with plans which is very true because you know, really distorted you know i mean we, we all are in some form Okay, um, we can't absolutely um, know everything, mm -hmm. uh, you know, and we just have to kind of have this, uh, we just have to have this inherent trust, this innate trust for it, and just believe it, rather than to resist it. But sometimes, I don't know, um, I just feel like sometimes maybe suffering is not necessary. Maybe um, pain is, maybe pain is important to you know, understand yourself with. I feel like a lot of the time suffering is sometimes ignorant because suffering is happen. suffering is projection pain is <laughs> pain is exactly what it is until it's done suffering is right. you taking actual <laughs> probably very little actual pain but you taking all the stuff you've been through that you remembered and then you repackaging that and projecting that into the future that's what suffering is suffering has nothing to do with what you're actually because you can do a body check you can say am i in pain at this moment Am I in pain? Right. Like, no, I'm not. <laughs> then what are you suffering about? Like, what, what what's the suffering for? <laughs> yes, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's it's a great way of looking at it. I've never thought about it that way. Um, but you're absolutely right. <clears throat> in the past, when I've had moments where I feel like I'm suffering, it's always been where I have, like, retraced back to my past and I'm like thinking about something and it's this yep. accumulation of pain and just like bombards you at the same time like how I'm, you know yeah <laughs> yeah and it's it's yeah. it's almost never something that's actually happening to you like look outside and see like i've said this before but like look behind and see if like a grizzly bear is chasing your ass down and getting ready to eat you like look back <laughs> oh, okay there's not a bear there so you know like there's not a robber banging through my window about to come, like, kill me and steal all my crap. Like, it's not currently happening, so why am I suffering? You can do that. and Because we forget about it. I'm not, I'm not trying to be condescending to say this because I do it myself, but the, the line between your present moment and your internal projection system is very... It's a thin line. It's very nuanced. It's not, it's not easy to just say, okay, I'm present now. Okay, that's future, that's past. No, it's not like you're not having like a keyboard in your mind that says all those things. It's yeah. invisible, right? Yeah, yeah. For the most part, it's invisible. And we forget about it. We completely forget like, oh, the, the present moment is all that exists and the, the future and the past are purely imaginary and somehow this whole thing comes together to make what appears to be a life. We forget about that. Right. Yeah. Oh, yes, Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, there is there is a very thin line, I feel. And also, um, also it takes some time to maybe like snap out of it if you're not really aware. That's when that's why sometimes we give into like crazy arguments with our parents or whoever, and things really blow. Because <laughs> you know. It's, we forget to like capture ourselves back to reality mm -hmm. um but yeah sometimes i just see it's like a puppet string where people are just like you know it's not even them that's you know uh, moving it's just it's just being like played out it's just it's certain. just it's just a pattern like right if if a person is not animated from within then they're animated from without right like yeah, if you're um, if you're animated from within you don't ever have to move 
If you want, you can stay still forever. Like, I can stop moving. Right? If I don't want to move, I don't move. So if somebody's looking like they're just talking and talking and talking and you can stop inputting, you can walk out of the room and come back and they're still talking, right? Yeah. That means that they're not even present in their own conversation. Something else is going on there. Who knows what's going on, but it's not about a being like fully in themselves and using their words and using their body and using their everything. It's something else is going on. Right, yeah. Oh, yes, absolutely. And also, yeah, like when we get into a situation or perhaps before that, we always get like forewarning. We always feel like this unease that's coming. Mm-hmm. At least I felt it. Uh, it has always been me who's kind of neglected it. I just ignored it um, yeah. without taking like action. I guess we all always get this. Um, I would say it's an instinct. It's like a warning from your inner you know, guidance. Hey, something is coming. Yeah. Uh, on the surface, like you have to be vigilant and just you know not give in to whatever that's coming out for you. Yeah, yeah. We, we we do we have sort of energetic for for knowings i have that too right i don't ever i don't ever just have like i'm completely peaceful and then the next moment you know this energy is screaming through and i don't know what to do with it there's always it's always very tiny at first there's some sort of thing that's a little bit off and then i'm like okay there's that and then you prepare uh you don't, you don't prepare it's just you are aware of it instead of just you going off and having no clue and then all of a sudden it hits you upside the face you feel it from the very beginning small stages and then it's just about staying present through whatever yeah. wave is coming through oh yes yeah um yeah i guess it's more like a wave like you, you describe it mm-hmm. it's never like that um it's not like a nuclear bomb <laughs> It's more like the way. Uh, it can be like a nuclear bomb. I, yeah, it you know. can. Yeah, it can. If you've <laughs> if you've been if you've been you know in the other state for a long time, like Lavette talks about the rubber band pulling. You know, if you have something that needs to be a certain way as far as the overall structure of your life, and you've been pushing off in maybe ego stuff or fear stuff or desire whatever stuff, mm-hmm. that the the rubber band is stretching at a certain point, and if you if you don't whatever it is you need to do drop people add people you know drop things add things meditate don't right. whatever then the thing snaps all of a sudden and you're like that's the atomic explosion right and then you have this right. this massive thing and you know it's always good in the long run because it purges out of you things that you've been holding on to but it's much more painful than if you're if you're just going through it in stages yeah like a yes. day like a daily practice make it a daily practice Right, yeah. I don't think I've ever had. Maybe I did. Maybe when my grandfather died, I felt something in me just snapped completely. Yeah. Um, so I always had like problems uh, dealing with uh, like uh, you know like a death paradigm that has always confounded me. So I'll, you know, like we know in reality that there's no such thing as death, but then. When you really see it happening, I mean, in a three D world, when when some when a three D world collapses for somebody, I guess it's painful in the beginning, and then you just kind of oh yeah, I mean, he's still there, but it's not he's not here. Yeah, and well, we're also we're also blocked from that. We don't know for sure exactly what happens to people when they die. You know, yes. you can say yeah. you can say everything is energy, and energy is neither created nor destroyed, but. Regardless, the universe likes form, otherwise it wouldn't create form, so it makes sense that if one part of the form disintegrates, then another part or another human is going to be sad about it, of course. Like, you get familiar with somebody, of course you're going to be sad about it. Do you have an idea of what happens to us after life? Do you have a vague idea? I think it's similar to... uh, I think you come out of you come out of the constriction that this realm is which is you're blocked off from a ton of things and 
were were kind of dumbed down as far as intelligence. I think you come out of that and you you, you become more of the omni like overmind and you see the whole situation for what it is. And you know, if you're a soul that's adding lifetimes, each lifetime is like another sheen on top of the soul or like another, you know, little level of it. I think you would go back out to that, maybe maybe rest or something. And then if you want to dive back in or if and who knows what free will is. I don't know what it is up there or you know down there wherever this thing is located but i just know that as far as here the way this thing is is put together is intelligence so it would make sense that after there's also intelligence you know? yeah um i have this um, feeling where like you know when we exit our body room and Sorry. We are sure maybe we're shown all our lifetimes, and then we're tricked into just creating another lifetime. Then <laughs> perhaps when we reincarnate, <laughs> oh, you made these mistakes. Oh no! And even then, I guess there's like an entity controlling you. I don't. I, I don't. Mean, I don't first. know. I don't know. The, the, as far as the tricking things go, I think people like tricking themselves. I think that's what people uh, really, yes. really like doing because. At the, at, the at the bottom of it, there aren't individual beings. There, there's just, like, there's, there's the existence. It's what it is. Like, how are you going to trick yourself if you're the only one that exists? It's not even like that. There isn't a individual... There's not, like, the thing that can separate into individuals and then go back to oneness. It's, it's, not, re it's not related to the idea of chopping things up. It's something that's outside of that. Oh yes, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Like, and also, do you think we have any consciousness or awareness um, when we leave the body? I think there only is consciousness and awareness. Right, as yeah. in consciousness of our like, you know, this lifetime if we exit it. Or do yeah. you think that, yeah. Well, I mean, we have to think of it in terms of our own understanding here, but if you think about what it is here, we can only be conscious of certain things at certain times. We can't be conscious of everything. So right. if you're going out of the limited scope, well, you're, you're going into something that you're aware of a whole bunch of things rather than just like one set of notions per given moment. Like here, it's like we have this little scope thing and we're looking you know we're looking along the line like that like that's what your present moment's like you're looking at two pixels per per go or something and then when you come out from that you're not just looking at two pixels you're looking at like a whole shit ton of things right so does that mean that like you know when we exit um we see it from a very detached perspective because, you know, we are here, there's some kind of emotional attachment to things, mm -hmm. even if we deny it. Mm -hmm. But then when we leave, do you think that those things would exist? I don't With think... With the consciousness I don't, I, and the awareness. I don't think that we have the, the... I don't think we have the ability to really get what that's like from this perspective. Huh. Um, yes. But... I just know that in this life, if if you go into the freedom, you have mm -hmm. that level of freedom here. It's still limited as far as your external trappings, but as far as internally, the infiniteness of your own self is mm -hmm. it's the same as far as I understand when you exit the body. It's just that if, if you've been doing self-work and cultivating that inner freedom, your inner freedom now just has more things to touch and explore rather than being space time bound, you know, to your, wherever you're at, you know, you're in Singapore, I'm in, you know, California and we're bound to this particular space time. But outside of that, likely, you know, you can look at your own path and past and history and all the interactions and you can zoom in, zoom out, or you can take a break and do nothing, or you can disappear for a while or whatever. Like you can probably do anything. Right. Yeah. I mean, that's always, um, like, surprised me 
how these things work <laughs> when you just exit like the 3d realm like how uh, how is the consciousness like like how does it feel like maybe it just feels like you're just this oneness i guess but at the same time i don't know is there well, some limitations it's it's, it's all <laughs> it, it just it goes crazy when you're trying to say is it is it like this or is it like that because very likely with our own words and concepts in this moment and all the accumulations we're setting up for what it's going to be like after that yeah like people <laughs> pe people keep thinking like there's an actual thing like there's just a thing and you know you can ask me a question about how that thing is and very likely that's not the case like you, huh. you're building it at this moment and then you know maybe when you're out of the body you're going to have some version of whatever you thought of the possibilities right so we actually create realities even after Exit, exit. I think it's constant. I, I don't think it ever stops huh. doing that. Right. Because, uh, because I thought that it stops for that one lifetime. And then if you're not really conscious or aware, or some, something else captures your sense or entity. Uh, if you're not like, aware and then they attach you know, certain things onto you. And they can get hooked on it or not get hooked on it. Depends on your awareness. And then... It depends on you. Like, right. in this life, if you are a mm -hmm. certain type of energy, or a certain type of gullibility, there are going to uh -huh. be beings that are going to come in and they're going to say, hey, you know, this is, you're this. Guy 3, you're this exact thing and uh, you need to do this because such and so, right? right? And if you're that type of being that feels like they're correct, well, then there you go. You have the whole scenario. Guy 3 is going to go with this person because, you know, they said she should and now she's in there. The same th exact right. thing with the afterlife. Like if you die and then all of a sudden you're floating toward a white light and the light says, oh, you know who, you know, it's like, come to me. <laughs> yeah, I will give you lots of, I'll give you lots of sweet things and whatnot. I'll give you back rubs and things. And, <laughs> you know, if, if you believe that, then that will happen. Then, you know, if you believe, oh, I've heard all these stories of, you know, don't go to the white light because you're going to spit back on earth. And you're thinking of that, and the white light is like, oh, you know, I'm going to be nice. Actually, 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 down on Earth, I know they told you that I'm mean and I'm going to kick you back, but I have something else to show you, actually. Right? right? So the white light goes and shows you something else. and But the story keeps, it, it keeps creating, and, and it's, it's due to your own, your own creativity. It's not that yes. the white light itself is doing that. It's that your creativity is bouncing off of whatever intelligence that white light is. And you're going to come together yeah. and co-create something. Either you're going to go spit back on Earth or you're going to say, fuck you, white light. I've heard about <laughs> you. You're full of shit. So, you know, I'm, I'm going to explore this particular thing. And, you know, I'll keep you in the back, you know, as a possibility if I get tired of this particular thing. But I don't want to go back right now. And if you're in your own power, then... Mr. White Light can't do anything about it. Right. Yeah. So, like, heaven and hell is also a farce, right? I don't know. <laughs> um, <laughs> it, you have to always bring it back to this particular situation and concepts because yeah. flat earth, round earth, right? Like, y you can we are just as incapable of deciphering what this situation is. Are we on flat earth? Are we on round earth? Are we in a thought experiment? Are we in the mind of God? Are we floating on a cloud? Are we on the back of a turtle? Okay, whatever. You know, like, are we living a simulation? I can go on and on, and I could tell you that I could make a definitive case for any one of those things and tell you and convince you that this is exactly what's happening. Right. And this is with your own two eyeballs looking out. And telling me like, oh yeah, he said this. So now I can verify by looking out the window or whatever. Th there's as much confusion in me trying to convince you one way or another on any of those as me trying to, with the imaginative realm, convince you about whether heaven or hell is real or not. That's why I'm saying like, uh, what I'm trying to say is that we have more to focus on here in this realm, which is hard enough to understand as it is, rather than get caught up in worrying about heaven or hell, because that's not even able to be seen. Let's, yeah. you know? Yeah, it's true. Yeah. It's the same thing. It's the same story why people are robots, because they have 
the the system or ourselves you could say that the system is ourselves because everything is ourselves but it has people fragmented out people are worried about the orange man and they're worried about vladimir putin and they're worried about whatever kim jong is doing they're worried about china taking over the world uh they're worried about you know what kind of money is going to be taken for the giant wall that orange man is considering about building and they're worried about jobs and the workforce and the army and the military and space and you know are we going to have a, a space force now because because tr trump says that and uh, is the fake alien invasion coming in and we're fragmented out into a billion different pieces via projection and we forget about this and here right. nothing is going on like <laughs> <laughs> is somebody banging your door down like is anything happening whatsoever I think I think our imagination is our greatest friend and our enemy. <laughs> yeah. You know, it just creates like different realities and universes and within and without, and then we just co create. And then, yeah, but we are the primary reasons for something to work or not to work. Yeah. So that makes a lot of sense. Yep. It's always back yeah. to you. It's back to whoever. And if you're scared, then you're uh you know you're projecting like you're you're out if you're not scared then all of the images and the projections mean nothing because no way. yeah they actually just they're not real in the first place like you could say yeah. you could say this isn't real like your body even it's not it's as intangible as everything else like there's a sense of self it's not like a reality reality and yeah. if you go beyond that you know into the imaginative realms that's even less tangible it's more airy Right. I guess, like, everything exists, right? But then that's why these schizophrenics, like, they perceive certain things mm -hmm. in the reality, and that, yeah. I guess, it shocks them. <laughs> well, they're, they're, like, they're, 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 them as, like, mentally retarded. They're dipping into, they're dipping into parallel realities, or they're dipping into other parts of the multiverse that they're actually right. experiencing. So, like, when you see the crackhead conversing normally with the parking meter you know having a full-blown conversation with the parking meter he actually is talking with somebody but to you it looks like he's talking to a post <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah oh my god yeah yeah it's so interesting how uh, you know i guess being mentally retarded is the new normal <laughs> because we just don't see that <laughs> But, yeah, I just have this uh, funny question. You know, how how do you deal with um, focus? Because I, I also feel like I'm victimized by this ADD, ADHD. Mm. Um, yeah. This whole, I always found, I always found it, like, highly improbable when we do like focus but i guess it's more complicated than just being in the present moment because when you're doing a task or... i would say with focus um keep it just remember what you're doing okay because we i talked about this in one of the other videos as far as the brownie point system of the realm um, like the regular people are just trying to fulfill the image requirements for their to-do list. That's it. Cause that's all you need for the brownie points. Like for instance, if the example I gave was call mother is your item number one and you just called mom and let the phone stop hung up after one ring, right? You called mom, you called mom, right? Mm -hmm. It rang and you hung up. How much work did that require? Maybe like 10 seconds. <laughs> right. Did you talk to your mom? Yeah. No. Yeah, I mean, I did, yeah. You did not. But you did call yeah. mom, right? Yeah. So this is what I'm saying is when you're making to-do lists and you're trying to focus on getting something done, we get mm -hmm. lost in our own wanderings and we forget that there is a brownie point system that's going to give you a nice little good feeling if you complete the task. So, 
as creative beings, we get lost in that and we just float off onto a tangent and then we forget there was a to-do list in the first place, right? Right. Yeah. So what I'm saying, if you're, if you're actually interested in doing this to-do list or this goals, uh, this, uh, where, which requires focus, set up your brownie point, like set it up exactly, you know, say what anything I want to go for a run, like in your mind or on a piece of paper, write down like the minimum requirements for fulfilling that minimum. And then okay. make sure you do the minimum and then mentally check it off. I did the thing, even if it's, I called mom and it rung once and I hung up. Okay. You get the brownie okay. points for that. You get the feeling of fulfillment for having completed the task, even if you didn't carry it any beyond that. But the purpose of that exercise is it's going to get you, uh, actually able to complete a task rather than floating off into creative la la land and forgetting that you have the to-do list right yeah oh my god this makes so much sense yeah I, I always feel like i'm always wandering in the la la land like all the time yeah just, that, like, that's, you know, that's like, good i mean i'm not saying body. that's I'm not saying that's bad we like that like we like the muse yes. we like the nuance of life but if you're wanting to to also do the other accomplishment thing, th those don't pair very well together. So you have to set up this minimum yeah. requirement, like you have to fulfill the thing, and then like mark the check mark and get the brownie point. And then right. when, when that minimum requirement system is met, you can start adding nuance into it and being more creative. But make sure that the the monkey mind gets its its cookie. <laughs> right. The monkey mind. <laughs> <laughs> right. Perfect. Yeah, yeah. Okay. We gotta wrap this up, guys. We're just coming up on like yeah. two hours, I think. Two so. hours. Yeah. Sure. Oh. Uh, In fact, I had my friend tap my class for me this morning because I, you know, since we scheduled it, I'm just like, okay, I'll do it for you. I w I would say also, uh, and it's to anybody else who is still sticking around and would like to try this for themselves. A good way that we do to stop to never do anything to sit on our asses and just worry about everything is yeah. we uh, we hold things internally that we kind of know we need to do but we don't ever do we just like let it sit and sit and sit like yeah. find out within your day that you're in find out everything that you really need to look at some way or another and mm -hmm do all of it, like do every single one of them and do to the minimum requirement. If it's something like I want to become a world famous piano player. Okay. If that's one of your things, do the minimum requirement. You know, I will play some piano. Okay. Go bang on the keyboard for five minutes. Check the thing, like get rid inside of your mind of every single thing of your internal, like I need to do this. I need to do this. I need to do this. Do the minimum requirement for every single one of those things. And then th put the notepad aside and be with yourself because you're not able to be with yourself while all these things are bouncing around in your head. Right. I guess when you put it on paper, there is like this peace established between yourself. And I mean, I mean, it's an insane way of putting it. Fulfill the minimum requirement for the things you know you need to do. Just do yeah. them. Don't think about it. Just do it. And then when you're right. done with it, then pat yourself on the back and say, I did a good job. Now you can rest. Now you can be, now you can be in your moment, you can meditate, you can be creative, you can be spontaneous, anything, but you're disallowing yourself from accessing that space if you're holding all of these unmet, like, expectations for yourself. Yeah, I, I guess, thank you for bringing that up, because I guess it's an incredibly useful exercise where, you know, <laughs> when you live, like, double lives, mm -hmm. one is spiritual, one is in, the, like, the 3D, you know, yep. world, and, because you can't really possibly merge them together. It's, just, it's, it's not, cool, it's like not easy. Yeah. It's yeah. not easy. Uh, they're, they're, they do coincide. They're, they're happening simultaneously. But right. there's such a divide between what one is versus what the other is that... Right. Uh, so it's, it, it is like feeding the dog. Like, as far as <laughs> making the monkey mind happy and making, you know, that part feel like something is happening and accomplishments are happening, you have to, like, feed it cookies or whatever. Like, feed the dog its bones... And then once you're done right. feeding the dog the bone, the dog's not going to be barking at you all the time, and you'll be able to just go, like, you know, swing on the swing or go explore uh, the park or, you know, whatever you want to actually do that 
you wish to be spontaneous, you'll be freed up to be able to do that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you. <laughs> Definitely follows. I I used to have like my personal journal, but I even then I feel like I'm wondering and I'm in my love. <laughs> <laughs> so it's just yeah, just fascinating. It's just things to try, yeah. you know. Uh, right. So that's how you like treat, um, you know, just making basic requirements to live and things like that, right? Like you just have to do this and just yep, do it. Just, yeah. Like Nike, just do it. Right. <laughs> Fulfill the minimum requirement and then free yourself. Like you're holding yourself hostage by keeping these things undone. If you keep something that you want to do Absolutely. undone, you're, right. hol you're holding your own being hostage by doing that. Absolutely. Yeah. That's an, uh, it's a very, you know, very unique and, and genuine way of putting it and creating things. Yeah. It's, yep. Go create. <laughs> make the world beautiful um yeah thanks for coming on it's yeah really no it's uh i always enjoy myself like you know having i always learn something new and always share something yeah um so yeah it's always interesting to come on the show i expect sure. you to come visit at some point one of these years um no i'm coming this year you coming to the it's states yeah, I told you, like, I'm coming. Oh. My exams end in, like, May. I would come, like, maybe, like, the end of May or June. I would be there. Cool. Yeah, I would uh, hopefully, like, visit you. Yeah. Sounds good. <laughs> Make it happen. Okay, yes. Actually, it's weird because that's how I made it happen uh, for my trip to L.A., like, maybe, like, you know, a year a two, two, well, a year and a half ago. I was like, I'm going to do this, and I just kind of did it. Like you said, I just did the minimal requirements, and it just, everything just flowed. It's it's weird how you just have to do just the minimal, you know. It is, because we, we, yeah. try, we try to, like, create the entire universe. Right. We're, we're like, yes. uh, yeah. I want to, what do I want to do? I want to wash my car. And then instead of washing your car, you're literally, like, creating the universe to make the washing car happen, and then the car never gets washed. <laughs> Right. <laughs> yes <laughs> oh my god that's so true <laughs> yeah alright Gary um, thanks you know, Gary thank you me. again yeah till next time good... yeah Peace. till next time namaste namaste <laughs> alright bye bye